Check engine light on? Take the guesswork out of your check engine light with O'Reilly Veriscan. It's free and provides a report with solutions based on over 650 million vehicle scans verified by ASE certified master technicians. And if you need help, we can recommend a shop for you. Ask for O'Reilly Veriscan today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. No music, no intro. We're back a, a little late. We do apologize. Um, but I, I, I wasn't going to host the show when, when Ryan was, you know, my, my man was going through some stuff, you know, Hurricane Sally came in and my, my man didn't have power for like what, two and a half days, man, like four. Oh God. <laughs> Since what Tuesday. Yeah. It's, it's been a minute. He, you know, yeah. him and him and wife, he'd been going, you know, hotel to hotel is it's, it's. But we're back now. So first thing before we get into football, start talking about things that aren't important. How you doing? You, you, how your family doing? Every you know you make you, obviously you made it through. Just checking in with you that you're all right. Oh, I'm good, man. Like, like you know, <clears throat> no bodily injury, <clears throat> no uh, you know, no in, no damage to my house and then like that. Family all good. Wife good. You know, it's all good. It was just you know inconvenience to, you know, this is a new world. <laughs> You know, first world problems. You know what I'm saying? No electricity, no internet. You know what I'm saying? Can't charge your phone. Just bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good now. Back home, power on. I'm ready to go. I'm ready for some football tomorrow. Man, do you know how great tomorrow is going to be, Ryan? To not have you to like <laughs> glorious red zone tune yes. in. Don't have to worry about anything. I am. I am ready. I'm ready, man. And I couldn't really, I couldn't really enjoy it like I wanted to last week because my wife was going on a little, on a little vacation, and uh, you know, I mean, I watched about an hour and a half of Red Zone, and I had to get on the road, and then I like had to watch the Saints game, just kind of passing, and just kind of, so I couldn't really focus like I want. But tomorrow, like I ain't doing nothing, putting on Red Zone plus whatever games on TV, just chilling. You know what I'm saying? Like that's you know, that's the life. No Saints. Tomorrow, oh, could just man. enjoy football. Man, that's the best, bro. That's the best. And I was looking at the schedule. Like, we have a lot of primetime games upcoming. Like, oh, oh, yeah. The Packers game is a Sunday night football game, so I don't have to think about these niggas for a whole Sunday. Like, <laughs> hey, yo, hit, hit pause. You're going low again. So, Packers game, Sunday night football. There's another game coming up in a couple of weeks. Maybe the Lions. I don't know. I know they got another Monday night football game. It's just it's just stacked up to just not be stressed, you know. Um, yeah. But Monday night football, going against the Las Vegas Raiders, the game that 90% of Saints Twitter was going to be at. Even even you, you said you and Bree were gonna be there. Don't know if that was true. Could have been bullshit. Man, like, but I live by it. I was gonna show up, bro. I was I'm, gonna I'm show up it. like hands in the air, like you know, New York walking out of the entrance, like hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. You know, and, and now it <laughs> that is, that is not going to happen. Uh, the Saints are in Vegas, and Sean Payton said today that Vegas was the only place that they were not able to buy out the hotel for, which just to think about that in itself, the fact that yeah. Gail Benson is pocketing up money, not that she doesn't have it, but seven hotels completely bought out for the season. Bro, trust me, and that, that's bank. Like, you know how much that costs? That's insane. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, <laughs> perhaps the uh, man, like, you know, because a lot of owners, they don't have to do that. Like, there's no league mandate that you have to buy it out the hotel. You know, that's just something that she is doing. So, yeah, props to her, you know. But they can't do Vegas. I mean, buying out <laughs> buying out a Vegas resort, she, she probably looked at that price and said, nah. <laughs> 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 Ain't doing that. 
But they apparently, I listened to Sean's presser. They buying out. A, they bought out a bunch of floors. It's basically gonna be like a quarantine, or like actually like a real bubble. Nobody's gonna be allowed on the floors or whatever. So, you know, hopefully it'll be good. But you know, I mean, there's always that risk. But uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's insane. Um, and so the Saints and, and Raiders are both, you know, one and zero. And this is the first time the Saints can go two and zero. I believe I saw them since two thousand thirteen. Mm, bro, mm. seventy years it's been since. That's crazy when you think about it, huh? Yeah, Especially considering you... how successful they've been the past couple of years. You know, nuts. nuts. Um, so I know there's been a lot of. So we're we're here to break it down. We're here to break it down the Raiders Saints game. Um, Bert, I'll start with the most interesting thing or the biggest things I think for this game to look out for. Is is the injuries? Obviously, we know Mike Thomas is out. Even with that whole report that Adam Schefter came and said, like the, he looked great in practice. Like, <laughs> come on, man! Like, come on! Now, and here's the thing: I truly believe he had. Like, we've talked about this. I know. I know Nick also said something along the lines of he has that psychopath gene in him, like like Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and. Like, like you said on Twitter, like, you have to put him down for him not to play. Like, he's just that competitive. But just we all knew that he wasn't going to play. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about – I'm not going to talk about Marcus. Whatever. He's not playing. Move it along. But to me, the two – the two in, or three injuries that are key in this game is that stud right tackle Trent Brown, who the Raiders signed from the Patriots – I want to say two seasons ago, and they got a lot of flack. A lot of flack for that signing. Sure and did. It turned out to be a fantastic free agent he, pickup. For he them. solidified that offensive line. He really did. Completely solidified it. Um, but it sounds like he's doubtful for the upcoming game on, on Monday night. And then his backup, so the backup right tackle, Sam Young, um, is also doubtful. So oh. the Raiders are going to be down to their third string right tackle, and I believe the person, the player that they're going to play at right tackle is actually their backup left tackle. That's that's huge. That's huge, especially against the defensive front. And the Raiders, we talk about the Saints offensive line being studs. The Raiders have a top five offensive line when healthy. Obviously, they're not going to be healthy on Monday, but that talent across the board. Uh, they have probably the best center league in Rodney Hudson, Gabe Jackson. Uh, so what strikes me in, in a general sense is that it may be hard to get to Derek Carr. And more importantly, they, the Saints have to look to shutting down the, heart, the heartbeat of that team, which is Josh Jacobs on defense. Yes, yes. That's, uh, that's priority number one is stopping Josh, Josh Jacobs because they're going to run him like, even if he gets two yards, one yards, <clears throat> John Gruden is not going to back away from the run. He's going to just keep on pumping him. And he's a weapon in the pass game, you know, and he's a, he's a real deal. Josh, I really, I really enjoy watching him kind of an old school running back and kind of uh, gets tough yards. You know, he might not wow you with like, you know, 90 yard runs or nothing like that, but he's, he's just going to three yard you and four yard you to death. Next thing you know, he's at like 80 yards, and it's the fourth quarter, and then he got the defense tired, and he's killing you. And he's really good in the red zone. So, I mean, the run defense is going to have to be money. Money. Because you want, you know, I mean, look, I I probably like Derek Carr a little more than most people. I just think there's a little something there, just personally. I just think there's a little more there than, you know, a lot of people think. But I still would rather the ball in his hand. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I would rather, I would rather, you know, Derek Carr having to sling it 40 times yes. rather than just dealing with Josh Jacobs. Absolutely. Um, and what I won't say it concerns me per se, um, but the Raiders have the offensive line to even even with their right tackle being missing, they have the offensive line to dictate a game. Uh-huh. And what I mean by that is that 
we'll talk about Saints offense going against the Raiders defense in a little bit. John Gruden's smart, and he knows his defense is probably not, even after them coming off a bad game, he knows his defense is probably not up to par to go toe-to-toe with the Saints offense. Or so, or he knows his offense is not, you know, so what you're what he's going to want to do is, is shorten the game, keep number yeah. nine number nine on the sideline, and just control the game with Josh Jacobs and just keep the off and keep the Saints offense off the field as, as, as best he can. Right. Right. So the Saints defense is really going to have to create negative plays when they use Josh Josh Jacobs. Like they can't let this be a four yard per attempt, a four and a half yard per attempt type game from Josh Jacobs. They really got to cause some negative yardage from him and, you know, make them play behind the sticks and force uh, Derek Carter, you know, force him into third and long situations because, you know, they still play a lot of short game, even though they have rugs. They still play a lot of short game passing. And, you know, when you watch them, it's kind of similar to the Saints offense. And, you know, that's where Sean Payton kind of learned offense from. He just got his first job in the NFL. He worked under Gruden uh, for the Eagles. So his first kind of NFL schooling on offense was from Gruden. So they're kind of similar in the way they kind of use different personnel and uh, the way they scheme the pass game out there, West, old West Coast offense. So, uh, you know, it's going to be that similar approach to where you're going to see a lot of short passes and you're going to see a lot of, uh, you know, play action and a lot of a lot of running the football. And they just – the Saints defense is going to make – like take an onus to make – to like kind of force Gruden to shy away from running the football. But that's going to be hard. Absolutely. It's going to be hard. And then we talked about this. I mean, we, we saw it a bit against the Bucks, And I think, obviously, linebacking, linebackers, defensive line, it's going to be crucial. But I really feel like where the Saints may get – and Baldy did a, a great job of, of, of breaking this down. Um, Chauncey Garner johnson Malcolm Jenkins, they, they're so physical in the run game. Um, and we – like, I, I – It'll be interesting to see if Dennis Allen goes with the same approach that he does right. that he did against Tampa Bay. Because well, against right. Tampa Bay, they played a lot of dime. So Tampa yes. Bay has a lot of wet like weapons, you know, at wide receiver at tight end. So right. they played a lot of dime. They were still able to, to stop the run with their with their defensive line and the linebackers. But I wonder does his approach change a little bit going against the Raiders? Well, where maybe they play a little more base maybe you know in terms yeah. of getting it, it'll be interesting to see how how that matchup is gonna is gonna look or he could say you know our our identity of our defense is we have studs in the secondary and yeah. that's what we're just gonna do we'll, we'll yeah. stay in dime we'll stay in nickel and we know that our our slot cornerback and our strong safety are gonna help us shut down the run game yeah it's gonna be interesting because uh Sean Pete basically said today that Zach Bond is going to play. He's going to be active this game. He wasn't active last week. And I think they only played two snaps of base defense last week. And I, I don't think you're going to see that this week. I don't think they're going to play a ton of base. But I think you're going to see more than you saw last week. I think you're going to see Zach Bond get involved in more. Uh, you're going to see a lot of their run, their run stopping, you know, personnel on the field a little more. But I think the heart – you know the DNA of the second of the defense is the secondary. So, you know I don't think De- De- uh, Dennis Allen is going to shy away, away, from, away from that too much. You know I mean I think that's just that's just the DNA of this. That's how the defense is built. So I mean it's, yeah, that's going to be interesting, man, just to see how that matchup works. You know especially you know when they bring out the dime defense with the three safeties. It's going to be interesting to see how that matchup works. When, John, when, you know, that kind of pushes John Gruden to go towards the run, to run on that, because that's what you do against time defense. Yes, yeah, that's what you, it, it is. Um, something, a little intriguing thing I'm looking I'm looking forward to see. I was, I know, I, I didn't have a, con, not concern. I didn't think he was going to get cut in terms of DJ Swearing. But I was highly surprised how much he played against Tampa. Highly, like just the number of snaps he had. Yeah, now with PJ being healthy and essentially kind of transitioned to being like a safety and yeah, he's a safety nickelback. 
Yep. It'll be interesting to see who, like, and DJ Swearinger for the most part, like, he, he didn't have a bad game. No. Um, he had a good game. And so the, the Saints just have so many options defensively that they can do. Um, so we're still talking about the defensive side of the ball. So let's kind of just talk to the listeners about what to expect from the Raiders. So the Raiders are a complete – there's – I heard, I want to say it was on the, around the NFL podcast that the Raiders have the most, like, rookies and second-year players essentially kind of on their team, I believe. Something along that line. So their right receivers consist of Henry Ruggs, who is questionable, but more than likely, of course, he's going to play. Um, Brian Edwards, who I was a big fan of, you know, of him when I, used to, when I watched him for the upcoming draft season out of South Carolina. Uh, Tyrell, Tyrell, Tyrell Williams, their number one receiver last year, is on IR. He's going for the year. And then Darren Waller, who I know that you were, just like I can claim being the biggest Patrick Mahomes fan when he came out, you were the Darren Waller fan. And I, I remember that when he got drafted by the Ravens. Like, you were just a fan of his. And obviously, he's had a huge turnaround to his life, which is great in itself. And yeah. – He's a, you know, he's an upper echelon tight end. Um, so Derek Carr has weapons. Um, not to the and degree he got, that... And he got Nelson Aguilar, right? Oh, I mean, yeah, I guess I am kind of forgetting about Nelson Aguilar. He caught, he caught a touchdown last week. He did. He, 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 actually, his name. He, he actually caught it. <laughs> he caught it. <laughs> Held on to it. Um, uh, maybe, maybe that gives you, maybe that lets you know what I think of Nelson Aguilar. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, don't forget about Jason Witten. Man, that dude don't get on my face, man. Like that dude. I Bro, mean, he literally looks like me at T. Like, just put me at tight end, and I could do that. I'm telling you, bro, I could do what he does. <laughs> Bro, I watched a little of that Raiders game, and just like Grunk, like he had a refrigerator on his back. <laughs> Jason Witten, like he had about two fridges. <laughs> he caught a man. He caught like a four yard pass, and he didn't do nothing. Nothing with the bro. Caught it, got hit. <laughs> he said, "I I got out of broadcasting for this. It's not worth it." <laughs> um, but Derek Carr has weapons. Um. Again, any team in theory that the Saints are going to match up with when they're on defense, it's crazy to think that they have the personnel to match up against teams. Like, it, that's just – it's kind of hard to believe with what we've experienced, but they do. They absolutely do. Um, but I think, again, the the story of this game is going to be the offensive line for the Raiders. Um, and if they, if they play – and – that right tackle, whoever's going to be playing right tackle, I know Dennis Allen and Sean are thinking of ways to attack the right side of the of their offensive line right now, without question, to exploit it. Absolutely. And I know Dennis Allen is going to cook up some blitzes. I don't know how well uh, Derek Carr is against the blitz. Uh, so I imagine they're going to test him, especially on third down, with some funky little blitzes. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But, you know, Derek Carr, he gets the ball out pretty quick now under Gruden. So it's a lot of quick game. It's a lot of, you know, passes to the flats. So, so uh, you know, guys are going to have to tackle well and all that stuff just to make sure that it doesn't get leaky. Something I do know about Derek Carr, and this has kind of been a thing for his career, it kind of ties into people criticizing him for kind of being quick to check down. But he's a very difficult sack. Yes, yeah. that's all oh, he is. He, like, you know, so if you're listening to this, I like, don't expect as a Saints fan, even though they have, they're down to their third right tackle, that it's going to be a lot of sacks on Derek Carr. He's a very, like, career wise, it's just a, he's a very difficult quarterback to tackle. Where that's him yeah. giving up on a play too soon and just checking it down, um, you know, but that, that's just, that's a story that, that's been a case for him throughout his career. Absolutely. So let's flip over to the other side of the ball. <laughs> we got to talk about the offense. Hey, hey, Drew, offense and, and, and company, I know n- number 13 ain't out there, but against this defense, I mean, they got to cook. Yeah. 
So Teddy put up 30. Like, offense got to show up. And Teddy, man, Teddy, Teddy had some nice throws in that game, man. Like, he he, he threw a beautiful deep pass to uh, Robbie Anderson. Yeah, that was nice. He, I mean, he, he, you know, they, like, if the Saints offense needs to kind of make a comeback this week, the game do it. You know, I mean, the defensive backs aren't great. They're young. The linebackers. Who's the linebacker uh, that I think is going to be out? He's out, actually. So, I what? I, yeah, he is out. What I So, he was actually a linebacker I wanted the Saints to uh, sign in free agency. But I can, can't pronounce his last name. I just oh, always referred to him as white Chicago Bear linebacker number 44. Yeah. <laughs> him. <laughs> him. Like, I, like, he – so, when someone got injured last season for the Bears in their linebacking group, he stepped in as a backup, and he played real well. Um, real well. To the point where, like, I wanted the Saints to kind of maybe sign him to replace A.J. Klein. Um, Co- Nick Co- – no. White, white linebacker number 44. He's not playing. Um, so, that leaves them with – Corey Littleton, who the Saints actually tried to sign as a free agent uh-huh. from the Rams, um, but he got, you know, according to Nick Underhill, he got out of their price range. Um, and then they, they traded for Raquan McMillan from the Dolphins, more of a kind of a downhill thumper out of uh, Ohio State. But, like, like, the offensive line for the Saints should be at full capacity with yes. Reese healthy. He should be starting at right guard. As Emperor Palpatine would say, I know there's not, Mike, Mike's not playing, but the Raiders should be ready to experience the, the full force of a fully operational Death Star. I, I, yeah. It, it, it should be. And, you know, I mean, I mean, Mike Thomas just does so much. He's done so much the past couple of years. It's kind of hard. To, I think he only missed the game it was like his rookie season or so, or maybe the second year. And it, it's just – he's just been so consistent. It's hard to envision what envision what the past game will look like. Without him. Even without him. Like, it's, it's just hard to see. But when you look at uh, Jared Cook, how he came in last week, like, he's cooking. You know what I'm saying? Like, he literally carried over from last – the end of last year, the last five games – to this year, like him and Breeze, I think they all they have that symbiotic relationship now. Uh, Traquan Smith, say what you want about him. I think he, you know, he had a good uh, training camp. I think he moved well uh, last week. So I think, you know, he, he said in this presser that he's finally starting to really grasp the other receiver spots. He usually just plays the Y, knows that well. But he said in the past, you know, when he played the other receivers, Spots, he kind of second guess, guess himself a lot, and he feels like he's you know surpassed that point at, right now. So I think you're going to see him kind of move in that uh, Mike Thomas spot a little bit and kind of get moved around and get used on slants and uh, some of those shorter uh, shorter pass options. Uh, then you're going to see I think you're going to see Ty Montgomery get used some. I think you're going to see more passes for uh, you know Evan Kamara. He's going to have some real good looks against this. Live back in corner. Yes. So, you know, I, I, you know, you don't want to say, like, oh, they're not going to miss Mike Thomas because they are. But I think they could cook up something enough in the past game that they might look even better than last week, even though they're without Mike Thomas, just because Absolutely. of the opponent. Oh, for sure. And like, I, like we said on the last episode, you know, a player like Adam Troutman, for example, like those targets have to go somewhere. So I think Ty Montgomery, like you said, is, is a great option for that, you know, the targets to go. You know, you drafted Adam Troutman in the third round, you know, as a tight end, yeah. which is a, a higher round pick for a tight end. Like, he has to produce, um, maybe get involved in the passing game some. And it, I think it's going to be very curious to see who gets called up from the practice squad. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the two players that can get called up from the practice squad, you know, is it – Juwan, is it going to be Juwan? Is it going to be Callaway? Like, there or you know, little, little 
Little Jordan. So it's you know it's, it'll be interesting to see who gets called up, but matchup wise, you know, looking at the Raiders, just you just go to their corners. Uh, they're starting a rookie, and 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 Arnett, again from Ohio State, um, got cooked by Robbie Anderson on a on an out and up that led to that yeah. touchdown. Yeah, it was cool. filthy double move. Um, they got Trey, uh, Trayvon Mullen, who's a good young corner. He's a good young corner. I, I caught a lot of glimpses of Raider games last season, um, and he's good. Um, they got, you know, their safeties. They got LaMarcus Joyner, who I, you, you were a fan of. He, you know, he came over from the Rams. They got the, the second-year player, uh, Jonathan Abrams. And then, you know, l- listen – if he had, hadn't got hurt, I am I still marvel a little bit at how good of a career Eric Harris has had. Yeah, right. Like yeah, that's pretty underrated. That, that's underrated, man. Like he had <laughs> the to go from the CFL. CFL. He you know he, he's put, he's had, I mean I, I know he was better than bro. Yeah, he's had a better career than I mean obviously injuries played a factor into that, but he's yeah. had a, a hell of a career coming from the CFL. Um, and so, but even without Mike, there are matchups and here's what I think what the matchup's going to be is I single-handedly remember, I don't remember if it was the first game they played against the Rams in the regular season, or maybe it was the NFC championship game, but, um, Littleton could not guard Alvin Kamara, couldn't guard him. Lined up one on one, coming out the backfield, option choice routes, Texas routes, jerk routes, whatever you want to call it. He could not match up with him. Um, wouldn't shock me at all if Peyton remembers that and I was like, you know what? It's this gonna be the AK game. Like, I'm gonna attack him and whoever maybe else is gonna try to defend Alvin out of the backfield. And you know, we may just ink dunk, ink dunk take our shots here and there, but the matchups for the Saints offensively should be there. Um, and this is no disrespect to, to, to Nick Easton, but having Reese in the lineup should be a big upgrade, especially in somewhere like the run game. You know, the Tampa yeah. Bay had a, you know, very stout front seven, shut down most of the run game. Uh, this should be a game that the Saints, in theory, the, the Saints should be able to run on the right, for sure. Yeah. Yes, they should be able to run. They should be able. To, I hope to get Latavius Murray a little more involved in the run game. Uh, I mean, put some respect on my dude's name. Like they asked. I mean, uh, Trayquan Smith was talking about Elvin Kamara, and he was like, he couldn't even remember Latavius Murray's name. He was just like the the other guy. Uh, uh, oh yeah, Murray. I was like, damn, you on the team? You on the team? Like you in the building with this dude? So, like, man, I mean, get this dude involved, man. Like, you know, get this dude involved. But obviously, you don't want to take away from AK, which I understand. You just want to get AK involved as much as possible. And I think this is going to be an AK game. I think similar to Seattle last year, you know, his first game without Drew Brees, you know, give it to your dogs, man. Like, don't overthink this. Nope. Run with your dogs. Jared Cook, Alvin Kamara, you know what I'm saying? Like, Run with them and let everybody else play off that, and you'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, Adam Trotman, I'm ready to see him. I want to just see him catch a pass, like catch a couple passes and just see what he does. You know, uh, uh, and Deontay we, Harris. We kind Deontay of – we don't Harris. forget about him, but, like, this could be also like a sneaky Taysom game. Like, Oh, yeah. Just him going against kind of smaller – linebackers that the Raiders have, like, I could already, like, you know, Jonathan Abrams prides himself of being, like, a hitter. You know, we saw that in Hard Knocks. That was his reputation coming out, you know, coming out of, out of college. Like, I, I can see, like, a collision with Taysom Hill and Jonathan Abrams where, Tays- like, Taysom wins it. And, yeah. like, so it wouldn't also shock me if Taysom is more involved in, in the offense as well with, with Mike being out. Absolutely. I think you're going to see all hands on deck type of offense, kind of like you used to see from the Saints uh, in the early days where it was just no, there was no true number one. It was just kind of all hands on deck. 
you know, everybody eats meat, you know, and I think it's going to be similar to, similar to that. Uh, it's going to be interesting, man. It's Monday night. Like, we know the Saints rarely come out flat on a primetime game. You know, and they're going to be tuned in. Drew Brees is going to be tuned in. He's had, a you know, a week and a day to get himself right. Uh, you know, I, the whole question about, you know, if you listen to a lot of, like, national – media podcasts on national media shows. There's been a lot of question about his arm. You know, has he has he hit that, you know, 2015 Peyton Manning plateau where it's just all going downhill? I don't think so. You don't know. I just think, you know, I think Peyton Manning was a specific case because he had, you know, multiple neck surgeries, back surgeries. He couldn't even feel the tips of his fingers anymore. Like he was, he was a beat up dude. I think Drew Brees is just a forty year old, you know, just a forty some year old dude who's just, you know, he doesn't recover as quickly. He doesn't have as much ammo in his gun as he used to. You know, he can't. He probably can't hit a bunch of deep passes as much as he wants to, but he can still throw, you know, a good thirty. 35, 40-yard bomb, you know, when it's called up. So I think uh, I think they just need to, you know, use them wisely, and they have. You know, I think I think week one was kind of an aberration, just the way the game played out. I think everybody was just a little rusty. I think everybody's going to get back into tune. And if you look at Saints' record under Sean Payton in September – it just hadn't been great. It's it's kind of it's kind of five hundred over his uh, over Sean Payton's Sean Payton's tenure. This is kind of a five hundred month of September, and usually they start cooking in October. So uh, you know maybe they you I, I think you're going to see the offense get a little better this Monday uh, against an opponent that they should get better. They should be, and uh, the the I think the key of it is the Raiders don't have the dogs in their front seven that right. Tampa Bay does. And exactly. Tampa, Tampa, like, let's be real. Like, Tampa Bay was harassing Drew Brees. And we've seen this story before. Like, not just Drew, but just any quarterback. When you're getting harassed in the pocket, you don't have the mobility. Like, the offense is going to look bad, like like it did against yeah, the Vikings. You, you just pointed out the key thing. People talk about the arm, but to me is the movement. Yes. I, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, these guys, they just – can't move like they used to, especially against these super athletic defensive uh, defensive linemen and, and linebackers. It's just they just they just can't. Like I, I saw Drew Brees take like a few sacks and hits that he usually would be able to maneuver out of, but he just can't anymore because he's in his forties. You know, so I think that's really the catch because he's at the point where he needs the time to, you know, uh, hit his stride back up pitch, wind up in anticipation for the throw. He needs a little more time than he used to to make that, especially on deeper throws. So I think, you know, against a team like – against a defensive line like the Raiders, I think you're going to see him be able to have that time to make those throws. And it's going to be in the new Las Vegas – what's what's the name of the stadium? Is it uh, Radiant? Allegiant. Allegiant. Allegiant Stadium? Yeah. <laughs> The <laughs> rumba, <laughs> it's the beautiful rumba though. <laughs> In the rumba, it's, it's beautiful though. It's beautiful. I think he's gonna, you know, I think he's gonna cook out there, man. You know, I think I think we're gonna see a good, like vintage Drew Brees. Nothing crazy, <laughs> nothing like 400 yards, but like a nice 280, 300 yards, couple touchdowns. I, I'll say this: even without Mike, offensively, our our offensive line whatever – how the team is equipped on the offensive line, the offensive side of the ball, they should be able to do similar to what the Saints did against the Colts did. Exactly. Like, I'm, exactly. I'm not saying it's going to be that tough, but I'm saying if you just look at the matchups. Right. Just – they should be able to – I don't want to say embarrass the Raiders defense. Like, they don't have, like, NFL players over there. They do. Um, but I still think that defense has not come together like they wanted it to. And let's be real, like Mike Mayock, at, you know, Mike Mayock and, and John Gruden have had some good some good draft picks. Josh Jacobs was a great draft pick, um, and they've had others. But the, the biggest – well, the two biggest missteps that they've done is the thing that 
Groot, like Gruden and Mayock are are in charge of this, is they they traded Khalil Mack, which still makes no sense to me why they traded Khalil Mack, but now they don't have a pass rush. And then and last year in the draft, when they had the number four pick or wherever they picked, instead of taking Josh Allen of Kentucky, who was balling out for the Jags, they take uh, Khalid Farrell from Clemson, and he gets outplayed by Max Crosby, like who's a third, fourth, like Max Crosby is their best pass rusher. Yeah. So when you miss that badly on a top five pick, especially an edge rusher, I'm not, this is not me saying that, you know, Farrell is not going to be a good player. I'm just saying it's, it's, re- it's a results business. And right now, he's not putting the results that you should see for a top five pick, especially when you, when you draft the pass rusher. So exactly. this, and people kept saying this on Twitter, like the word I keep saying, if the offensive line is protecting Drew and I'm getting, I'm getting a good sense that we're going to see a good offensive line game, especially with, you know, where we being in there at right guard. If Drew is having issues in it with a clean pocket, then we got some concerns. Then we, then that's a little, that's, that's, that's kind of panicky. But if, if the offense protect, I think a perfect example is you saw it, we saw it on that Jerry Cook 40 yard pass. Like he had, like you said, he put all of it in, into that pass. Every yeah. little bit he had, he put into it, but the whole line protected him and he got the ball where it needs to go. Right. And it's not like you have to see that, you know, eight times a game. You just need that three, you know, two, three, four times a game when Saints are in those kind of uh, conditions, you know. So uh, I, th- I think they'll be fine. But, uh, yeah, other than that, and, and uh, I also want to point out, you know, just a little low-key, special teams. I don't think Raiders special teams was that great last week. So that might be a sneaky, you know, a sneaky way the Saints could steal something, you know, with Deontay Harris. Uh, I think he, he he's still, like, a great returner. He has some great returns last week. And I think you're going to see Deontay Harris a little more involved this week in the past game. For sure. He was involved a little bit last week, and I think they're going to kind of just sprinkle him in here and there, whether that's uh, screen passes, end the rounds, shots downfield. They're going to, you know, I think you're going to see more of him, and I, I look forward to it because he's, uh, you know, he's talented, man. Like, he, you know, to say he's coming from just a little, you know, a little low-key small school, man, He, uh, I think he's talented, and he has that kind of, that trait, that mentality that uh, that carry, carries over into the pro league because he really wants to be great. He does. Absolutely. Well, it, it, thank you for bringing up special teams because this would all not, this wouldn't shock me either to see, you know, if, if John Gruden thinks like, you know, maybe his team is under undermanned or whatever, mm. I wouldn't be shocked if there's, fake punt, fake field goal attempt to try to steal a possession. Um, It is. I mean, we've seen it before. Um, And it wouldn't shock me. So if it happens, you know, that, you know, coaches, coaches think like, man, we don't, we, if we, if we want to beat this team, we got to do something that they're not expecting. Well, that's I'm I'm hoping Sean Payton is ready for that. Since, you know, John Gruden is like his good friend. They know each other very well. Hope he's ready. Could you you remember that Browns game? Was that 2010? And like everything worked. Oh, was, <laughs> was that the like Scott I, Fujita game? Scott Fujita game. Yes. The punter. I think I remember the punter having like a big run. Yes. Like the punter. Everything worked. Like every yes. trick play worked. Yes, I do. Of course I do. I, I got my. So I, they need I, to I, be mindful of that, man. Like. Yeah, they're yeah. they're at that point where you know every team is going to try to just do their best at. It. You know, no team wants to go. Oh, you know, well, the Raiders are, are you know are already have a, a win on season, but absolutely, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think we kind of covered it all. I think this should be a game that the Saints win, but you know, it's the Saints, so you know, and it, and it's we're not trying to understate. Mike Thomas, like we're not trying to like make it sound like it's nothing. It's it's huge. It's huge. huge. But they have so much offensively that they still should be able to to put up enough points against the Raiders to beat them. Um and 
we know that that dang the Saints haven't allowed a hundred yard rusher or whatever. It's getting tested on Monday. Yeah, <laughs> it's that will cool a hundred percent be tested. Um, and we'll see, and we'll see what happens. I mean, the goal obviously the the goal is you know go two and zero, and then after that next week are we we could be previewing is this game against the Packers like a preview of who's going to fight for the the Man. one the one seed I mean, in the NFC? I mean, that, that gives us a chance to kind of transition and just kind of do a little quick look at the rest of the league. Uh, you know, if Aaron Rodgers is Back like the way he looked against the Vikings, and he looked like old vintage Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, he did. Like, I know a lot of I know a lot of I know a lot of fans just kind of like shitting on Aaron Rodgers, which is fine. Like shit on him all you want. He's not you know he's not my favorite person ever. But when he you know when he was at his best, he was a sight to behold. Bro, I, t- I texted you. Yeah, I, t- I texted you last Sunday, like, yeah, and I was salty back. about it. I was like, "Oh, Aaron Rodgers is lucky back, huh?" Right, like he was making those Aaron Rodgers throws, and he's still been making those type of throws, but he's been missing a lot of throws lately, a lot of layups, just a missing, lot of, you know, just missing, and he's playing outside the structure of, of the offense. And he, but you know, last week he was in tune with what uh, uh, La- Lafleur was trying to run. He was within the structure, and when he had to come out of structure, he played well. Made like he made like two throws, where I just was like, "Oh, like what?" Yes, yes. It's basically a handoff in four, four, like just right in the pocket of the receiver. So if that arrives all season, that's a problem. For me. Yes, <laughs> that's a, that's a huge problem. And there, but, a, a lot of the flack I gave the Packers last season, even though they were thirteen and three, was. The, the Aaron Rodgers we saw on Sunday against the Vikings hardly played last season. And so it was difficult for me to believe, like, believe in them. Obviously, like, you know, whatever. They they got they got dealt with in the playoffs. But if, if Aaron Rodgers is consistently playing like he did on Sunday, like you said, that's a problem for the NFC. Um, it makes the Packers more dangerous. And if the Saints are able to go 2-0, and and, you know, I believe the, the Packers play the Lions, who – whatever, um, are likely to go to like, – don't talk to me about a Matt Patricia coach team uh, – are likely to go 2-0. That, uh, that Sunday night football game, week three? Woo! Woo! Bro. Boy, it's going to be hot. But first, got, got to take care of business on Monday. Um, yeah. And then we'll, you know, we'll go – any, any, anything else in week one that – that has your eye. I will say that the uh, the almost Saints quarterback bowl, or should have been Saints quarterback bowl between Lamar and and Deshaun, um, mm. will be. Man, I, I know he signed that contract extension, but that, that team around Deshaun, bruh, 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 ugh. like it's like, it, oh, like watching him against the Chiefs. It was like, what is Bill O'Brien trying to build here, man? It's Trash. like, <laughs> well, it's you, like you he's, saw, he's downgraded. Yes, you saw him against. You saw how he looked against the Chiefs, and then you look how the Cardinals with Nuke goes for 15, 15 catches and one hundred and forty one yards. Exactly. <laughs> like I, I just don't get it. Whatever, whatever. Um, but then, I, then, I, I, oh man, and I, you I, know I'm go ahead. I'm just saying, I'm ex- if, if Houston can show up and help Deshaun, that game against the Raiders, or excuse me, against the Ravens should be a fun, a fun like football porn type of matchup. Yeah, it's a fun matchup. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of fun things going on. Big Ben, Big Ray, Big Ray, look like he's back. Big Ray back, man. Like <laughs> these dudes coming back, man. Big Ray looking like he cooking, uh, which I kind of predicted. I had the, the Steelers in the AFC Championship. Um. Man, that there, it's it's a little jarring to see how great the Saints defense is still to me. Like I can't believe it yeah. when I see them play. That Steelers defense is also They're the truth. nasty. They're the truth, and nasty. I give you know I give the Steelers props because they really stick with their players. Like Bud Dupree, he started out like eh, like kind of okay, and you know they 
re- they extended him. He, he just they let him build his 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 himself over the years, and where he's now like a he's a good like I wouldn't call him a leader or anything like that, but he's like a good outside linebacker slash pass rusher. You know what I'm saying? Still, like he's, I still remember that draft because yeah. there's so because a lot of people penciled the Saints drafting him. Like I remember reading so many things like Oh man. Who did they take that draft? Like um Was that the Rankins draft or am I tripping? I gotta look at it. That wasn't the Rankins draft. Was that no, the- it was not. It was not. Was that the Pete draft? No, that hold on, I'll tell you because I, I gotta now I gotta look it up. Um I just I just remember like our we had a, there was a ton of mock drafts with Bud Dupree to the Saints. To the Saints, yeah, a ton. <laughs> uh, here we go. Um, this is great podcasting, by the way. Damn, you're right. It was Pete. <laughs> it was Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it. it was the Pete draft. God yep. damn it! But I mean, knowing the Saints, they probably wouldn't have stuck with him anyway through his struggles. No, no. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, he, you know, he, he, he kind of. But yeah, that that defense is, it's good, man. Like T.J. Watt, like, I wasn't, I wasn't super high on him as a draft pick, but man, he, like, he's a true. That that has been one of my biggest misses because I remember watching him at Wisconsin, and I thought he looked like like his pass rushing abilities, like he like was running in sand. Like I, I just, I did not see it with T.J. Watt. I just didn't understand it. I thought he was getting kind of hyped, overhyped because who his yeah, brother was. Yeah, J.J. Watt, yeah. Uh, and now he's like a better player than J.J. Watt is right now. How nuts is that, bro? <laughs> how crazy. How crazy is that? Um, but, I mean, we covered it all. Um, it's it's going to be fun. Monday Night Football. It's good to have football back. Um, can we talk about, just very briefly, that the fact that if there was fans allowed at the Raiders, at the Raiders home opener, that tickets were going for a grand a piece. Say what now? <laughs> a grand. What? <laughs> a grand. They were going for a grand a piece for the Raiders Hope opener in Vegas before they announced that there wouldn't be fans at the game. How? Oh, man. How insane is that? That is insane. How is that just. That just shows you they're gonna have some high rollers in there, boy. Bro, it was some oh my high God. rollers. Yeah, Nuts. but that's why that's why Vegas that's why Vegas has an NFL team right now. You know, money talks, baby. Like Always. all that stuff. Oh, we it's you gambling and all that. Nah. Mm-hmm. All that out the mm-hmm. you, you know, it's gambling. It's not really allowed in the NFL. Like, no, like. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny, bro. I look at my Facebook, bro. So many Saints fans out there right now. Like, what? They don't give a, they don't give a shit about them damn COVID, bro. They what? out there. They not going to the game or nothing. They just happen to be in Vegas, bro. I'm so what, you, what, are they, what are you doing? Just staying in their hotel? Like, just, just the hotel. They ready to just kicking in Vegas for the Saints game. Like, <laughs> you know, tickets cheap, airplane tickets cheap, hotels cheap. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> they out there. I could give you like eight. People I know personally, like very close personally, that are out there right now. You know what wow. I'm saying? <laughs> wow. Wild. W- whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna get out of here. Uh, I think we've covered every every base of the game we, we can cover. Um, gave you some matchups to look out for. Um really quickly, and I and I'm just gonna say this because I saw that you had tweeted this, and I think I think you're hundred percent right, is if Henry Ruggs does play the possibility of him being shadowed by Marshawn, I'm I'm with you. I don't I don't think that they're gonna shadow with him with Marshawn. No. But one of my biggest fears again in the game is if they don't shadow him with Marshawn, if he gets lined up against CJ, mm. that's a mismatch. I love CJ. Love him. Yeah, He's a great a player. It's a mismatch. But you don't want him lined up one on one with Henry Ruggs. So whatever Dennis has to do, and I don't I don't know what the solution to this is, but it either has to be Jack Rabbit or it has to be Marsh Sean. But yeah. I like like the play like the play that Henry Ruggs, like he just moves all over the field. 
for the Raiders. And, like, he can put, you know, and the Saints have a great player that can emulate what he does and Deontay Harris. And I'm pretty sure when they're running, when they're doing their prep for the game, that Deontay is emulating being Henry Ruggs for the defense of the Saints to, you know, to be able to guard against it, what have you. But yeah. that's, that's a little worry that I have is that John Gruden's going to get a little creative. He may see how aggressive that, you know, CJ is and try to get Ruggs lined on CJ, and that, that's, that's a mismatch. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting because uh, they're playing a lot. The Saints are playing a lot more man to man than they have last year, which is expected. And uh, it's gonna be interesting how that plays out because, you know, Rugs even with Latimer, even if Latimer was shadow, shadowing him, he's not somebody you would want to just play man to man straight up all the time because a guy like that, he just needs a little space and he's gone. Like he's gone. gone. And not a DB, nobody can do anything about it. So hopefully they just have a plan in place where they kind of bracket him. They try to reroute, get physical with him off the line. He's a young guy, so he hasn't really worked out a plethora of moves to get off of press coverage. So hopefully they just kind of get physical with him, reroute him, and just try to buy enough time. You know, he's a young guy, hadn't caught a, plenty, a ton of passes, still trying to learn his way through the league. So uh, I think they're just going to try to – just going to try to take him out early at least, you know, uh, just so he's not just not getting killed with big plays because, you know, Derek, I think they're, they're going to have, like, two or three shots to run. It's going to yeah, happen. They have to, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, all you can do is you hope that they, that the Saints are ready to defend it. All right. We, uh, we've, now we've hit on every angle of the game. Every um, So with that, we're going to get out of here. We'll have the recap. Oh, no. Well, since they're playing Monday night, we'll probably have to do the recap Tuesday, Wednesday, have that up, and then be prepared for week three. Like, it's 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 on. Like, it's, it's nonstop now. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Feel, I feel, feel a little bit like like Greg. Like, <laughs> just, just, just ongoing. But ongoing, man. We in it. We in it. We in it. Um, so, anyway, thanks for everyone for listening. We appreciate you guys. Um, Ryan, please don't forget to set your fantasy football lineup. I already said it, bro. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week recapping the game, Monday Night Football. With that, we're out. Peace. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Check engine light on. Take the guesswork out of your check engine light with O'Reilly Veriscan. It's free and provides a report with solutions based on over 650 million vehicle scans verified by ASE certified master technicians. And if you need help, we can recommend a shop for you. Ask for O'Reilly Veriscan today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly.